you said vapor space, man. Dude, you know where I'm going. All right, man. I, I th I'll save it because I learned about the vapor space with these, with my real buckets. I was really important. The air layer that is between the, that's why the three gallon bucket and a five gallon bucket allows a really decent sized air layer and playing with that air layer was really important um, because that vapor space makes a huge difference. Good morning, DGC. It is Tuesday morning. Do something a little bit different. Release a little bit early today. While the dude is out of town, I guess Scotty will play, right? <laughs> Mess up everything. But I got my crew hanging out with me, uh, minus the dude, of course. He is still on vacation. Uh, next week should be uh, a full dude week. All right, I'll be back. Uh, Rambo, thank you so much. Hold down the fort, brother. Hell yeah, it's been fun. Looking forward to dude getting back and feeling whole again how long have you been working directly with me now oh uh, since october so how many months is that are you fractured are you partially broken man <laughs> i'm mean, broke holding up well did you say uh uh, uh broke in or broken i uh, broke in broke in oh no no i'm not broken broken <laughs> checkmate <laughs> i love it and hey, y'all thank you so much for hanging out banner what's up brother howdy man with the haircut and that big smile a little snowboard oh, in yeah i love it i see did you get haircut man <laughs> too soon i don't know nah, i'm gonna be but i'm sorry and i'll be getting there soon man got, got a good show for you today i was hanging out this weekend and i took a deep dive into sip buckets i kind of went back and i uh, was just checking out some of the dgc's questions and there was a couple of them like how can this be true why doesn't this happen? Why doesn't that happen? So let's get into it. It's really interesting. And it got me uh, learning a lot more as well. Started researching the air layer and I found a couple of things that were just too good to be true. Uh, sometimes I think about how hard I worked with air stones and deep water culture and chillers. And then I'll see something like what, what I'm going to show you, the Dr. Cracky method. And you're just like, wow, <laughs> well, I've been thinking about it too hard, man. Dr. Cracky measures. Dr. Cracky. There's a hidden T in there and I think a silent P. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's it's amazing. When you see it, you'll be like, yeah, I'm going to go on the Cracky method. <laughs> <laughs> and then, dude, there's lots of kelp in the news. Uh, I'm from Florida. Um, it's sad to see. I, when I used to go surfing, we'd see little uh, uh, sargasso, it's called. It's the brown kelp. And we would check it out and there'd be little crabs floating in there and stuff. And it was not only, you know, it was uh, cute because you'd find like one little bit of it. Well, now it's like tons and tons of it are washing up on shore. It's rotting. There's all sorts of uh, caveats with it, why we can't use it. So we'll get into that, Miss. But uh, yes, sir. Are you talking about the 5,000 mile long chain of kelp? Chain of kelp? Okay. Yes. Yes. And it has a lot to do with not using quality fertilizers and red tide and heavy metals and all this crap man so we will get into it yes sir did you raise your hand it felt like batter roses he said oh, no i was trying to double warns oh yeah you said heavy metals <laughs> <laughs> i love it man they, for some reason uh uh, YouTube just wants to show me either Ugly Kid Joe, which is the worst music there is, and then they want to put that in the same playlist as Metallica. Mm. And I'm just like, come on, guys. It's not YouTube. I'm sorry. YouTube does a good job. I don't get Spotify, man. I don't get it. Not in a hook. Hey, man, can I hijack real quick? I see you got to go, right? I got to go here in a few minutes. There, and there was a uh, comment that came in. Remember we were talking about the robot soldiers and AI and all that stuff and Chad GPT? Uh-huh. So some of this is Big Country TVJ. This just made me laugh. I was looking at the comments yesterday. Like, you made the show already. Did you see the new lawyer robot? Thing is terrifying. Mm -hmm. And I was laughing because, yeah, we're showing robots with guns and stuff and the worst most terrifying thing for jay is uh is the lawyer one <laughs> great my brother's a lawyer all right it's it can be uh exhausting sometimes to argue or to have a conversation with a guy that thinks he's supposed to win every conversation <laughs> i think with i think with lawyer robots it's gonna come down to like who's AI has access to the biggest law library, the biggest library of right. court cases, can make the most persuasive 
arguments. So that just seems like the big guys. So we're like, you know, we talk about some money's going to win out. My brother works for KPMG. It's a big old company. They're going to be able to afford a lot of AI. Instead of, instead of you have the right to an attorney or like a public defender, you'll get like a 14 day free trial of yeah, it's some software. <laughs> Dude, I'll be fine. I got chat GPT. No more. <laughs> Don't worry. Everybody else got three more. Uh, you like, that's like better than idiocracy. So you have the right to a 14 free day trial of attorney. That's fucking hysteric. I'll put that in a strip someday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, I was just thinking about all the shit that's being replaced. Like grandma, I did a couple uh, uh, links, but so soldiers. Soldiers are going to be replaced, right? I had Terminator right there. Wolf. People were asking, by the way, what setting. This is a stores of Bickle Plenty. Keep it between five and six, and it gives you a big old cloud. People were asking me what, what setting. And I love this thing. <laughs> I love this thing. All right? It's a robot that does your smoking for you. Yeah. Like lighters are like so like last century. Oh, oh, century, bro. How old is that thing? Six, four or five years old. Six years old. Look. <laughs> the horror to the uh uh the warning label or the ammo strong. Oh, that thing's awesome, man. All right, look at that robot. All right, that that's taking over. Look at that flying drone thing. Uh, how long is it till they repurp normally the drug dealers like uh, develop the innovation, but this time they seem to have taken it. Look, they've got drone coke subs. Grandma, click this scrub on if you always stop the bites it. Um go. No, go drones are the newest form of drug trafficking. You know, the laws aren't ready to combat them. That's got a couple tons of cocaine in it. Yeah, 200 kilos of drugs, man. That's a lot. What's crazy is the, the legal system is always trying to keep up with innovation. But now, Grandma and I were talking about this earlier. Even the innovators are having trouble keeping up with innovation. It's insane. Fast, everything's changing. Nobody knows where this is going to end up. And I want to put this down for a second because me and you were friends on Facebook. You wrote some just funny posts. You're like, I'm accepting your AI proposals now. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I just thought about the goofiest thing I could. And I go, hey, we're, I'm gonna, I'd like a chat GPT to, make me, to write me a proposal uh, to turn the local homeless shelter into a cannabis grow. The silliest fucking thing I could think of. So I wrote the homeless shelter in a cannabis grow. I go, make me a proposal. Drafting a proposal to turn the local homeless shelter into a commercial cannabis grow. Here's what it came up with. Ready? Transforming the local homeless shelter into a sustainable commercial cannabis grow facility. The objective, the objective, the purpose of this proposal is to outline the potential advantages and benefits of converting the local homeless shelter into a commercial cannabis grow facility. It's unreal. This project aims to combine social responsibility with, ec with economic growth, offering job opportunities, education, and support to the local homeless community while generating a new revenue stream for the city. Yeah, it keeps going. I mean, at the end of this, you want to vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is unbelievable. Support services. Uh Continue to provide essential services for the homeless community, such as housing assistance, mental health support, and addiction treatment. These services will be funded in part by the revenue generated from the commercial cannabis grow up. Starting to sound smart, right? Community outreach. Collaborate with local businesses, education institutions, and nonprofit organizations to raise awareness about the benefits of the project and to, to promote the destigmatization of both homelessness and cannabis. Holy shit, is this good? So the crazy thing about it, talking about robot lawyers, AI lawyers, how long until AI judges, AI replaces it because maybe a robot can make a better, clear, less biased judgment. I have a buddy that writes AI personas to do all of his writing for him. Right. And now he's using the AI to create the AI personas. Yeah, it did. Did you see the South Park last week? Yeah, parts of it. Oh my God, Grambo, you haven't seen it yet, no? No, I haven't seen it. I've been dying to see it just because I, I, I love the fact that that's coming, but no, I haven't seen it yet. Banner? You're a Banner's a South Park fan, man. You haven't seen this one yet? No, not yet. Okay, I watched it. My daughter was just like, dude, you've got to watch this one. And uh, it's supposedly written by AI. Uh, there's, you know, it's not totally written by AI, but I'd say two thirds of it is written by anytime they ask a question. You can tell that ChatGPT is answering it. 
And to, just guys, if you can, a legacy gentleman, if you can catch it, it is so funny, man. It's everybody is using ChatGPT and they think they're all the first ones to use it. And they're like, wow, you're, uh, you know, uh, mid century, what, you know, whatever, uh, your mid century Polish art, uh, report was actually really good, you know, and it's Kyle's like, <laughs> Mad, you know, and then Garrison starts starts uh, using it to grade the papers. It's awesome. It's just the whole thing is hilarious, man. But it does it does point out some of the shortcomings of the post that I posted originally was, "Hey, have your Chat GPT send my Chat GPT a proposal. I'll have my Chat GPT look over your proposal and send a counter proposal back." But how how long until like? We're too reliant on ChatGPT. I mean, I was explaining it to my mother-in-law that had never seen it, and I did get her high first. <laughs> so it was just right now. But what she said is, I was like, dude, I don't, you know, just like you don't need a calculator, you don't need to know long division anymore because you use a calculator. Mm -hmm. Are you going to need to know how to write a proposal? And I mean, I rely on you, mate, <laughs> I see very heavily to take you ask me hey what's up with kelp why is it interesting what's up with uh coco core and then you help me make sense of it and give it an order uh how long until you don't need me anymore i okay so i was thinking <laughs> what what so what what's left banner what is left you the same way i say hey banner i want to do this i want the, it to look like this i want this picture up and i don't you know whatever on on a website you make that happen there's going to be some aspects of that that can be automated, just like there's going to be some aspects of growing. I have a 18 year old kid. I wonder where I'm supposed to lead her, what I'm supposed to tell her to, you know, lead her to uh, build her skills with. Mm -hmm. You know, and I open the conversation to you all. I don't know, because across the board, I just saw even like labor. I saw a thing where a McDonald's opened up in Denver with no employees. Yeah, I just he loves robot waiters. He just loves them. <laughs> it's like they have these in Florida. They'd be great here. But you can't get waiters, by the way, or waitresses. Can't get them. My dad works at Home Depot. Uh, he's like, dude, they're paying $20 an hour and they still can't get anybody. You know, they have like 65 people in a store that should have 120 people. You don't think when somebody comes, dude, I see, me and you were hanging out. We seen that short folding robot. We went to our buddy who does the DGC t-shirts, which are going to be awesome, by the way. He shows us his giant machine that just folds shirts or hoodies, whatever. And he's like, yeah, we're just trying to pay a person or three people to sit there and fold clothes all day. But don't go that good. They don't need, they're, they're not as good as this machine is. What jobs can be left, boys? I don't know, man. Maybe, uh, maybe... This is what always happens. We always hit the point where we get AI. AI makes us too reliant. We become slaves. And then a solar burst takes out the AI. And we go back to worshiping the sun because it saved us. And we start all over again. What is the, What do we do for that again? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jeff. Next mass extinction event. Yeah. No way. I got geothermal. I got a green. I got a wall of pink. Uh, just to tame down the scary this of the T <laughs> it cannot look into the future. It can only provide information on what's already happened or what it already knows. Idiocracy saw the future. If idiocracy might <laughs> judge can see the future and <laughs> chat GPT. Can well, see the funny future. thing about that is they uh the uh, GPT's uh, model cutoff day was anything before November two thousand twenty two. And so it doesn't know anything about the future, but when you test it and ask it, uh, project, where do you think we'd be? It fucking does know the future. It like, it's always right about all the political leanings and everything. It's kind of scary. Now, I remember one of the buzzwords I learned from college in 1991 was regression analysis. And then when you try to drive the car by looking in the rear view mirror, mm -hmm. it's a thing. Mm -hmm. you know, it is a thing. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I am hopeful that uh, it'll free up a lot of work that we don't really like doing anyways and maybe we'll find a lot of times new technology creates new jobs and new industries and new stuff like that but at the same time man using chat gpt to create personas and then using the persona in chat gpt to create other other personas like 
Who knows? <laughs> Even just, I mean, I guess I'm stuck on just the, you know, Warehouse Kyle. It was so dirty when they were making recharge. It would just be school. When we first started, we were scooping it by hand. And we had no machinery. It was just on, on sheer will alone. Then we got a machine that you open the bag up and you go like that. And then you hand it to a second guy and he puts it through a sealer. And there's a third guy that puts a stamp on it. Um, if that could all be done through one amazing machine, you got, first off, Kyle never loved to do that. None of those guys loved having, you know, being covered in recharge. It was a huge upgrade when we got him a machine. But that double-edged sword, what happens when you can buy another machine that takes away all the jobs? Mm. Well, maybe we might end up in a future where everybody can do the work they love because we've got algorithms and robots sure. for us. And then uh, algorithms, and, algorithms and robots to help us sell it. And then uh, everybody's self-employed. Does it seem like people with their spare time end up doing the things they love? Mm. My wife has tons of spare time. She watches murder. Like real, real, real live murder stuff on TV. Yeah, I don't know, man. Or you fill your time with stuff. Like that's dreaming? Yeah, it's good. No, you know, like what they call murder porn when they're like... Uh, yeah, you know, it's not even like uh, face true stuff. Crimes. Yeah, true crime. Yeah, uh, I'm like, holy shit! Girls like that. Well, most girls like that, dude. Eating that, you are what you eat. What you put in your brain <clears throat> scares the shit out of me. She likes that so much. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't piss her off too much. I don't know where it's gonna go, but uh, what do you teach? You got you got a, a daughter. What are you gonna teach her? Uh, teach her how to love herself. Teach her how to think critically teach her how to learn to learn and adapt because i have no idea for years i was teaching her how to be a good salesperson right but now chat gpt chat gpt should do most of my job for me so who knows man god how i mean you know that they're going to be able to you know, like a robot waiter do basic shit mm -hmm. and don't get me to, they're going to be in the grill you're going to see robots doing <clears throat> you already do in florida there's automated potting machines that will take your plugs, pull them, and put them in a one gallon, and then fill them. Well, what is there's thousands of people who are doing? How do you think you get a plate for two dollars and seventy five cents at Home Depot? Even on a low tech scale, grow buckets are a way to automate growing, automate watering. Grow dots are a way to automate feeding. Yep. Recharge is a way to automate getting the nutrients from your soil into your plants. Like, and it's true, dude. You don't have to pay somebody to sh to, or not even pay somebody. It might be you. You don't have to drag uh bag big bags of fertilizer six times a year, or big things of you know things of water that you're gonna mix your hydro in tubs of water. It's true. You definitely you would need a couple friends to do that with you. So we're always innovating. We're always looking for ways to make things easier. We're always automating things. Did we cross a threshold where it's going to start turning against us? Or did we cross a threshold where now all of a sudden life is just going to become amazing? I'm trying to be hopeful about it. Stop dragging me down, Scott. Oh, I got to say, though, man, because it just makes it lazier. I seen this picture and it was, oh, it was a Jimi Hendrix concert. Oh. There was a Jimi Hendrix concert on. I'm looking at and I think Kenny or somebody, maybe you, somebody says, do you see an overweight person in that crowd? Not a one. Not a one. It's 1968. There is not one overweight person in that crowd. Probably because they all had to do a shitload of hustling. Well, I think also the food was different back then. I think a lot of our, our food industry is... Fair enough. But there was a lot of things that you would still have to do that, no. that are done automated. No, yeah, you know, a lot more, lot more movement that would have to be done. We're moving into Wally. -E. Have you seen that Disney movie? I -E? did, and it freaked. Okay, I predicted a future on that. I'm like, oh my god, this scares the shit out of me. How long will this be? <laughs> that was not science fiction to me. <laughs> it was a future documentary. Yes, yes. yes. Well, we'll see. Uh, exciting time to be alive. A little bit scary, but innovation, disruptive technology is always kind of just scary. glad to see people doing something. Yeah, no, it, it is an interesting kind to be alive. It's great. Well, and it's cool, too, because just for the average person, man, I wish I could draw that good. I never had that ability, and I have all these great ideas in my brain, but I can't get them out on paper. Well, now you can. Have you seen uh, the AI stuff Rambo. Rambo does? 
Uh, by the way, Kenny's kid thinks he's a hero now. He's one of the X Men. No, oh, no, oh, nice. That's always that was one of the things that always bothered me. I grew up in a very artistic friend circle my whole life. They all had the gift of like the pen, and I just couldn't do it. I had the art in my brain, and so when uh, originally 3D animation software gave me that, and then as the AI is replacing, but yeah, I was explaining to my buddy he can't get the art to look good, and I was like, "Well, do you know what depth of field is?" He's like, huh? I was like, do you know the difference between a 22 mil lens and a 99 mil lens? He's like, huh? I was like, that's why your shit doesn't look good. You don't know how to prompt. You don't know photography. You don't know what to ask it. I'd love to ask it to write code, but I don't know the questions to even ask it. Uh, see, but but for someone like Grambo, it's super empowering. For someone like me, who's always been a pretty decent artist, it's terrifying. <laughs> now Grambo can take my job. All right. So well, it's got its plus and its minuses. So then the job becomes and the skill becomes just asking the right questions. No, because like I said, I got friends that have AI that ask the AI questions. There's ways to prompt the AI to figure out which questions to ask for you. So, so if AI came to me and was like, we should make the local homeless shelter into a cannabis grow. You'd be like, unplug that thing. I'll horrible, man. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to head on. Hell yeah, man. Um, love being on the show. Thank you for inviting me on. You are going to Best Buy, right? Uh, Best Buy later. Yeah, that's that's like going into a time machine, man. We better say goodbye there. Brick and mortar stores. Everyone in the head. Back. Brick and mortar stores. Our Macy's is closing. Like, it's over, Jack. It's all. We might as well just pack up our bags and bank for Universal Basic and gone. Whoa! No, <laughs> not, 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 not. it's just I'll grow our own weed. All right, yeah, that's the solution. Ooh. Growing your own. If it was worth more than a few dollars a gram, this would be great. <laughs> be sorry, guys. Good hanging, man. Good hanging. Later, dude. All right. Well, that was that was a good hijack, right? That was a pretty good hijack. That is great. The one thing I hear, Scotty standards. I, I enjoy hanging out. It's the one thing I want to share. I love to share some grow knowledge that I have. Love to share the awesome experiences that I get to uh, hang out with my friends every day. So, Batter, give me a, a big up, Smith. Yeah, man. I love Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a joy. It's an absolute joy. Uh, hey, can I? I have a new friend, man. It's Sir Cortez the Conqueror. Uh, been hanging out. We, we met each other through him just volunteering or taking it upon himself to do some grow dots testing for us. And uh, he's been killing it. I actually sent a man, I wanted to play this. I sent him a real bucket system for him to test. And it's an Instagram reel. It looks freaking amazing. Of course, he's rocking it. And Grandpa, we're not allowed to show, we're not allowed to show plants, right? Yeah, we uh we had the thing where you, if you guys watch every show, you might have seen the one where we like stopped and debated and we came back. It's like, look, we debated it. We're going to show it. And we showed like some sick clones taken down yeah. and it took like three days. I uploaded it and I was like, hey, we're actually clear. I think YouTube's chilling out. And then two days later, it's like gone. So, yeah, I mean, we're trying, but uh, always with the, any of the after show and DGC patrons get to see everything. It's just throwing that out there. I dig it. I dig it, man. As long as we're, we're, we're doing the real grower shout out, do me a favor. If we, uh, me and Banner have been talking about this as to where grow dots, I love them for indoors for a short week when you can control the light cycle, click back four or five weeks works perfectly, but we're getting into outdoor season. I'm getting all sorts of calls from people. Can I do grow dots outside? And it just pains me to be like, mm, not those, but. There's certainly a grow dot that you can do outside. It was basically called Mondo last year. Mondo. <laughs> yeah, but we tested it last year. It's the it's what was was previously Mondo. So of course I called up the formulator. He actually likes talking to me now. And we've had we've had some good uh, uh some good successes together. And we, we put our minds to it. It was really very easy. We made an extended vetch. It's got a, a just a thicker coating on the nitrogen, so the nitrogen releases for longer. Uh, it lasts uh, uh, like basically like a 10 week veg. It kind of depends on your soil temperature. 10 week veg, uh, I'd say 8 to 10 week veg, and then a uh, 10 to 12 week blue. And it really does depend on your temperature, but man, it's enough to get you outdoors through the entire summer. So, psyched to get this out there. We had great results with it as Mondo last year. So, uh, really looking forward to see what people do this year. So, it is Grow Dots. It's an extended veg, right? Extended release just sounds like uh, 
like a ED pill, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's extended. Grow Dots extended veg. Gives you an eight to 10 week veg. Uh, last all outdoor season. And uh, it should be showing up any, I think next week it shows up. We'll be getting it out there. Probably the first week in April, I would think, is when it should be showing up. So perfect for planting in June. I know a lot of people are planting June 1st. Yeah. Hopefully we won't have any more snow at that time. We don't. We better not, because the event is June third, <laughs> right? Could you imagine if it snowed? Oh gosh, hey, never know. We'll do some shout outs, man. Sure. Come on, man. Come on. Hey, I talked to this guy last night. It was last night for me. I wonder what time it was in Australia. Rozzy J. Last thing I did, I was delirious from answering tons of emails. I was just going. You ever star the emails and you go through them? You just, I kept on delaying and delaying. And then last night I was like, I got to do it, man. I just went through the last three weeks of emails. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm, I'll talk to Rozzy J a little bit, man. So shout out to you, brother. He says he's into the show all the way from Australia. And by the way, when you read R-O-Z-Z-I-E-J, it took me a while, right? It's a Rozzy J, man. It's got lots of rosin in it. You get it? Yeah. I don't have to explain shit to you, do I? <laughs> Burns real slow down. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yes. How about JDK? Come on, JDK. Java development kit. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Come on, take a couple, Banner. Give a, give some shout outs. Can a botanist? Botanist. All right, you're buying up. I'm fighting. <laughs> I'm just Can a botanist. <laughs> right. And Taylor Burns. Now, is that Tyler or Taylor? Tyler. Taylor Burns. Taylor Burns. I'm not good at this. <laughs> I don't know either. That's it. I need glasses, man. That is a tricky one. Hey, before we get this started, I actually talked to, uh, first off, I want to shout out to Canna Nutrients. Good, clean nutrient. Uh, my kind of nutrient, simple. Uh, as far as liquid nutrients go, it's an A and a B equal parts, at least for the cocoa is. And... Man, it's a simple system. I love it. So I was actually just talking to Chet this morning, getting some information about his cocoa. Um, fuck, I'll hijack Grow Talk right now. You know what we were talking about? How cheap cocoa will suck in your calcium and magnesium. It's drawn to it. So that's why when you buffer cocoa, they buffer with CalMag. What have I been having trouble with the past few months? Remember I tried to use the cocoa bricks? Chan cocoa. Cheap cocoa is wasn't buffered and it is sucking in my magnesium. I have these magnesium deficiencies. I have to use Epsom salts. It took a lot of that in order to correct the, the cocoa wanting to suck it in. The cocoa has like a magnetic draw to pull in the co uh, uh, the magnesium and the calcium. So kind of interesting. I'm curious once I use a good quality, I'm now using, I'm using can of cocoa. And I'm using something, I think Coco Loco with the uh, uh, peat and the perlite mixed in just to do some A-B testing. But uh, yeah, I'll shout out to Canna before we get started. Yo, I, I asked you not to, I asked Banner not to look at any of the links because I was hanging out last night and I was reading some of these questions. And these are about sip buckets, but I uh, found it really interesting. Some of the stuff, you know, you go down the rabbit hole and I found a couple of things. I, I, or I think I came to a couple epiphanies. So uh, this is Grow Buckets by Grow Buckets by Jimbo Slice. All right, let's get in. Let's read this one. I just started using these Grow Buckets and Grow Buckets are uh, self-watering pot. They're actually really cool. There's people out of Georgia that when we saw what they were doing, we got their phone number, we called them up and just making, a, just doing something else with a self-watering pot, just another uh, kind of design. It's the one that has like the dipstick, a green dipstick that goes up and down. I actually have my palm tree in one over here, uh, but very cool. I just started these grow buckets and they're working great so far. My question is, would they work better if I ran an air stone down in the reservoir? And can you use Gaia Green as a top dress using these buckets? Any help would be appreciated. Love your show. Great information. It is nice when people say nice things about the show, Banner. Huh? Yeah, for sure. Makes you feel good. Um, you don't need an air stove with these. And I don't think it would be beneficial. I, I really don't. It's not that kind of thing where, where the roots are being bathed in aerated water. Uh, when you're doing deep water culture, that the roots are literally sitting in deep water. So it's really important to get air going through them because uh, otherwise that water just can't hold enough oxygen. 
uh, very different than what what we're doing, which is having the water and moisture in the media. So as, right. long, as long as that's uh, that that's vapor space there, able to wick. You said vapor space, man, dude. You know where I'm going. All right, man. I, I th- I'll save it because I learned about the vapor space with these with my real buckets. Uh, I was really important the air layer that is between that. That's why the three gallon bucket. And a five gallon bucket allows a really decent sized air layer. And playing with that air layer was really important um, because that vapor space makes a huge difference. Um, I tell you what, we'll go right to uh, cracky hydroponics. Do you see that there? Uh, I think it's one more over. It's a YouTube video. Yeah. Check this out, watching this guy, and he's doing this thing with tomatoes. This just exemplifies the air layer like you've never seen. This is called the cracky method of hydroponics. He's got those big tubs, you know, the rope tubs you buy at Walmart. He put a lid on there, and uh, he's putting tomatoes in there. He's just got a little net pot putting tomatoes, but he took his nutrient-rich water. He took water. Uh, that's why I was shouting out canna. I would put canna A and B in here, but you are literally filling that up with maybe 800 or 1,000 parts per million water. He actually has an EC meter and goes through it. Um, it is amazing. Watch, he, this guy has a, a little time-lapse thing going. I'll stall out for 30 seconds because, yeah, check this out. God, shout out to YouTube. It's no wonder I never watch anything else. Look at this. It is, it's just say I thought I said which day it was, but it just keeps on rocking and... And you don't realize that the plants sleep like that. Look at them freaking sleeping. <laughs> Come on, that's not crazy. Oh, they are freaking. And do you ever go in? No wonder they get pissed off and herm when you uh, show up in the middle of the night and wake them up. Bro, yeah, this is cool. But after a little while, it'll take them. Swine. Come on, look at the bigger they get, the more they dance. No, I mean those things are dancing. And by the way, when you go into your room first thing in the morning, yeah, look at that. That's root board. No air stone whatsoever. Nothing. There is nothing in there except just water in those buckets. And take a look. So as the plant grows, did you see the level of the buckets of the water? It's lower. It's creating its own vapor space, its own air pocket there. That's why it doesn't need uh that's why it doesn't need uh any the uh, air and he added air oh he puts it come on he puts a camera in it now this is awesome <laughs> who is this guy Hucho. yeah Hucho. Hucho. shout out to you yeah h one o c h o this is the crack key method dr cracky uh invented it well what is it though the the net the root net pot the whole thing the fact that it's completely passive uh deep water culture or passive aquaponics would you call that hydroponics i guess yeah, hydroponics. Uh, and we just invent, could you believe that if somebody told you that you could put, you know, all the deep water culture shit and all the circulation pumps and air stones and all that. If somebody said you can just take a tub, go buy a six gallon Walmart tote, put a styrofoam lid or a wood lid over it, put a net pot in there and you can grow them up, fill it up with water. Fill, use your, this is like grow dot style. You put your train in water. One. You got any more water to put No. Through. No, he let this go totally down. That's why he showed the camera. It took a month for it to suck up that 30-something gallons or 20, you know, whatever it was, 15 gallons of water. I don't know how big a tote is. But it's amazing. So, and then what you do is as it gets halfway, uh, once it gets to halfway empty, then you would put more water in it. But wow, could that pretty interesting. At first off, a passive hydroponic system, K-R-A-T-K-Y, Cracky Hydroponics. Um, it's it just an interesting system, but it really does show you about the airspace, man. If once you get a little airspace as the plant grows, that airspace gets more and more, or that vapor space gets more and more. Yeah. Uh, and the plants perform. That doesn't blow your mind? Yeah, totally. It It's creating its own environment below the... Or inside the bucket. I, yeah, but just the fact you don't have to refill it. You don't have to do put nutrient water in there once. Yeah. I didn't see what EC he put it at, but he actually has an EC meter and tells you. Um, Man, I kind of have one more question. I guess it kind of relates. Just more sip buckets. Well, hang on, talk a little more sip buckets with me, Banner. Yeah, man. 
always talk about the sip bucket. Uh, real buckets, auto pot, sip question. And of course, I'm going to ask, do you have a picture of the real buckets, Grambo? I am proud of my real buckets. Yeah, see if you can find one. Um, man, I just made my own uh, system. The really simple system for doing uh, self-watering containers. Ah, look at that. Yeah, my dad was a plumber. He taught me how to use a float valve. Uh, but that's my system. There's auto pots. There's hempy buckets. There's all uh, grow buckets. All sorts of different style of sip buckets. Uh, I will say you need to uh, have to work it out with uh, on a reservoir like the grow buckets work excellent but they need a little bit of a vapor space leaving a red I mean, in a reservoir so always the same uh, amount of water in there didn't work out so well for me so it does take the auto pot seems to do it really well uh the real buckets work but here we go uh okay dgc i have a question about scotty's real bucket or any sip system i'm growing in cocoa with new mill and recharge and have great results and he's got a great all caps, man. I like that. Uh, but I'm a busy man, family man with four kids. They all play sports. So I got crazy busy. The only time I get in the garden is between 5 and 6 a.m. every morning. Oh, respect to you. Uh, and, then I <laughs> and then I check on them when I get home from work. So, I so using a sip system looks like it'd be a great gift for me. But what about using liquid nutrients in a sip? I'm under the impression with cocoa, we should be watering till 10% to 20% runoff to wash out any salt buildup. This is where I find it really interesting. So wouldn't using a sip with liquid salts cause a buildup after a while? Am I overthinking this shit or what? Uh, anyway, I freaking love the DGC. Uh, it's my commute. Uh, I love my commute. And for some alone time to listen to my favorite podcast. I'm all about destigmatizing this beautiful plant. I'm a family man with kids in a bomb ass garden, so it's up to us to make weed normal in this day and age. Oh, I love it. Anyway, I figured it ask. I figured I'd ask before switching up to my grow before switching up my grow style. Anyway, any help would be appreciated. Tark three four six nine. Uh, excellent question. Really, the reason when you're having to flush out nutrients is because you're just really putting too much nutrients in there. When you're adding a fresh batch every single time of nutrients, uh, if you're adding enough and it's building up in there, it kind of tells you that you're adding too much so the plant can't absorb it. Uh, so yeah, sip buckets, uh, they absolutely can use liquid nutrients that you definitely use a lower EC because they're constantly being sucked up in there. And uh, definitely that new mill absolutely plays well with sip buckets. So uh, yeah, so. Did I answer the question? I think so. <laughs> yes, just use less water. The sip buckets. Think about what you're doing. You're just pulling a little bit of water up every time, and that water has nutrient in it, as opposed to just drenching. You know, drenching the pot with water. You get a, you put a lot more in every time uh, with uh, with the top feeding. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Anyway, I love the sip buckets. You will not need to flush them. I do do a top watering every now and again. I wouldn't call it a flush. Uh, and there is something about using recharge or using soil microbes in general that really seem to buffer that salt. Uh, so yeah, once we treat a recharge, I will tell you with the grow dots and uh, with the, the real bucket system, I've been using that winter frost. I used it to get out of... Uh, get out of my jam when I wanted to finish up the, the, uh, Oh, nice. The harvest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I wanted to get that done as quick as possible. I'm fighting that PM. I did use that winter frost and with pretty good results, man. You seen it? You seen the closet? What do you think? It's frosty. It is frosty, man. It was frosty. Hey, by the way, you put up a post. Where is that post? Can we, can we mess with it? <laughs> We've been having fun on uh Patreon. Hang on, let me see this thing. Grandpa, right up at the top is a post about should Scott trash his room or treat the powdery mildew plants? Trash or salvage. Trash or salvage. And yeah, I was surprised there it was, Grandma. Yeah. As you may recall, Scotty's dehumidifier froze a few weeks ago in a super cold smell and it added spell and added moisture and temperature swings uh, to, and led to a PM blue. 
treated the plants with ozonated water and was optimistic about salvaging the harvest, but ultimately decided to cut bait, chop, and start over from scratch. Uh, I will say that I did uh, I did manage to get to harvest. I'm probably, I, I made it to the beginning or middle of week six. Ooh. And so uh, I have them hanging. Unfortunately, there was some lowers that I had to throw out. There were just you know, too close, but man, what I saw that was totally clean and I am going to send it out for testing. As a matter of fact, in the comments, who has a testing facility? Let me, you know, give me, uh, uh, uh give me something that I can, uh, send it to. Give me somewhere I can send it to. Cause I really am interested. I have no, I actually I don't cough anymore, banner. I got my, yeah, that thing's pretty smooth. Yeah. You know, so I'm not interested in making myself sick. I use cannabis as medicine. Uh, anyway, man, what did you find? This is over on Patreon, by the way. Uh, shout out to our patrons, the ones that keep this thing going. Uh, and Banner has been really killing it lately. You've been up first off. You give a lot of shit out on Patreon, man. You're like Banner Claws over there. Uh, Hoarding, man. Yeah, but anyway, what he does, he puts up these uh, uh, questions. Everybody participates. It's a very involved audience, so it's pretty cool. But so what happened, man? People were really telling me to, to, to not throw out the clones. You were telling me to not throw shit out. What do you mean? Well, I mean, the, the Paloma, you can just get back pretty easily, but Pure is a little harder to get. Not I love can, Pure Vita. Pain and you like it a lot. He's talking about this Pure Vita that has the craziest calyxes. We'll take some pictures of them. I actually did take pictures. Just beautiful fucking donkey dicks. <laughs> uh, oh, but... Okay, I'll, let me represent myself first, all right? Dude, it's systemic. It is a nightmare powdery mildew is. I'm freaked out. I just did the Procure release chlorine dioxide in the air. I'll probably go do it again. Then I'm going to do it. I'm going to go clean all my filters and everything. It is so uh, scary to get PM that, yeah, I couldn't forgive myself if I did all that work and then brought plants with PM, dormant PM that woke back up, back, and then I ruined my next harvest. How am I going to forgive myself? I get that. And I'm no expert, but I don't buy into the systemic thing. I think the when it comes back, it means that you didn't get rid of it in the environment. No, I don't. Or you didn't get rid of it on plant. But you had like really healthy plants. Oh. I would have taken some cuts and tried to... Clean so, those up and root them. What do you mean? Try to clean them up, though, man. Well, you, you. Were, I thought the veg ones you had were. Uh, they they were showing no like, signs. They were showing no. Yeah, signs. Yeah, so there were no signs. I would just treat them as if they were and. And the plant out of it. Definitely start over or cleaning the room and everything. But describe my wife in two words. Everything's cool, man. Everything's cool. That's <laughs> everything's cool. <laughs> Oh, that's my favorite for No, but there's uh for sure the overwhelming uh responses seem to be to uh trash them and start over. And okay, is that's that definitely uh definitely a valid response, especially today where I mean it's not hard to get uh some fire cuts or seeds. Agreed and honestly. So like, uh people are being nice. JR is being very kind and he's sending me uh Paloma and then what is the other one that he's been playing with? Georgia pie. Yeah, Georgia pie. Uh, so uh, uh, allegedly, I might be getting a couple of those. They're 100% hemp, though, which is cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll be getting banner right behind, me, right behind me. You've been bringing me plants. Uh, so I'll be all right. I'll survive. Kenny, man. <laughs> hey, nice guy, Kenny. I got a shout out to AC Infinity. I uh, hooked him up with a 4x8 tent. And he is going to... They hooked him up with two 4x8 tents, actually. And he's going to be the clone guy, or he's going to be my clone guy, my mom guy. That's creepy, right? Can you be a mom guy? He's the cut guy. Yeah, he's going to keep all the cuts over there and uh, uh, keep all the mothers over. So it's kind of, yes. kind of a cool asset. To have. I get emails looking for something. I'm going to just forward them over. Uh, is it, you do get emails? I'm oh, sure you do. I get DMs. I get emails. That's all good. Kenny's all right, man. Uh, anyway, I killed him. I couldn't live with myself if... I could live with myself, but I'd be pretty bummed if, like I said, six, eight weeks later, I got the same problem. This was the worst problem I've had. You know, I was going to say this already. I've never dealt with russet mites and I'm knocking on wood, but this was worse than spider mites. This was this way was worse like, than... Dreams. This is equipment failure, though. 
Yeah. This You're going to is... be too hard on yourself over the equipment failure, you know? Yeah. I got to check myself, though, man. I got to make sure. I actually did make sure that don't happen again. I have a backup bucket. What happened is I have the uh, outlet of the dehumidifier that... Uh, how we can I, I guess what I'm saying is that's really the solution is like, I mean, cleaning the environmental, deal, but you got to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Like you have to wrap it or I don't know. What did you do to, I, I made a second outlet that if that one freezes, it redirects to a five gallon bucket. The filled. drain. Yes. Yep. So that's what I, the drain froze. I should have it fill my reservoir to be the ultimate in laziness, right? Uh, yeah, man. Command actually, Mikey used to do that. Yeah. Actually, every time I say that, people bum out on it because there is a it's, bunch of slime that it gets in that condensate line. Really? So he... Uh, it's, it's it's clean water. You just got to make sure you keep everything clean. It's super clean. His wasn't super long and it drained straight down. So there was no place for yeah. anything to hang out. Probably. And uh, yeah, that water was really clean. Yes. Good stuff, man. What else? What else, Banner? That saved like a couple quarters a run. Oh, I was like 50 yeah, cents. Right? Oh, right. It's right. just the idea that you're sucking. It's it is pretty, cool, though. It's and like, it is cool because a lot of times you don't lose much water. Yeah. You'll be like, holy shit, all the water that was going in the air is going back into the reservoir. And you're like, only what the plants are actually absorbing is what I'm getting. Yeah. Just feels like something that, like, you go to check out someone's grill. That's like a, like a highlight. Like, it's a pretty cool upgrade kind of like mod for your grow. Oh, a, a nice dehumidifier. Oh, yeah, bro. Like my, my water goes right back into my reservoir. Yeah. It's like a circle of I, life, man. We, treat, we try to be a part of the solution. That's uh, nice. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, take a shorter shower, okay? <laughs> hey, man, uh, I am psyched about the growth stickers. It has been a really fun experiment. And by the way, we have to order some of these. I was going to say, so are we pressing them or what? Uh, you know what? One of the cat cannabis actually picked them, but just scroll really quick. We're going to pick them on Thursday. Grambo, would you? So these are the new new contestants? Yeah, these are some of our new contestants. It would hang off. These are great, man. First off, I like Morning Wood. Morning <laughs> Taylor does good there. So he's one of one of our new guys. I don't think he was making memes before, was he? Yeah, scroll down, That's Grandma. Amazing. These are kind of funny. There you go. By the way, they have to be. I was picking some of these. They have to be in square format. What is it called? One by one format? That's okay. That one's on black. That's all right. Oh, it's awesome. But I actually want to get some of these printed. So if you can make them square, don't get yeah. caught. Come on. That's funny, man. <laughs> this one's awesome. I'd wear that as a patch, right? Yeah, it's back. What does it say? Wait, it says, uh, wait. I can't read. Yeah, hang on. Click, click, click that off. one. What do you Stealth is wealth. I'm so glad we kicked the clicked on that. Bearded Roots, that is fucking awesome. Come on, that's a patch, right? I feel like that's the, didn't we like call out like uh, something you said to like, oh, it's like Bearded Roots. And did I say that'd be a great DGC name? Is that a new, is that a new patron of your uh, new DGC? Wow. I think we we called out Bearded Roots as a joke. Yeah, that cracky had some Bearded Roots, didn't it, man? That dark sure. cra that's cool as hell, man. I say, man. That might have to be, uh, that one's, I love this one. No sticks, no stems, no seeds. I like that one. Ewe. That's patio. Mark Cothano. Sticks, no stems, no That's patio toker right there. This one's great, too. Don't you, these are the idea behind these is to be able to stick these on the door of your grow shop. Click that local grow. I like that one. Around the future. That's a good one. There's a couple of, I love them. Come on. That's you want cool. Let's stick that on the, like uh. Yeah, right at Road 34. Dude, right above the year. On any toilet at any concert venue around, man. This one's great. Bearded Roots. Hang on. If it's too loud, you're too old. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Nice. Yeah, that's amazing as well, man. By free, locally grown. Will you click that one? I love that one. I just like the colors. Oh, the colors. Locally grown. Right? Come on, Batter. You know you want that. I mean, that's Grill Dots colors, eh? Rules for your local growers. Wow. Hey, come on, DGC University right here. DGCU. Ah, Mr. Green Jeans. What's up, brother? <laughs> What's in it? That's a Chad Westport. <laughs> Sounds like something you just look like. Oh, when in doubt, pour it out. I want a cat. Mm. I love it. I love it. It's pretty funny. Nice. Yeah, these have been great. So thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was explaining about there's all that uh, snow at Mammoth. Yeah. There's just everybody's houses are just buried under two uh, stories of snow. And I'm sure there's got to be a couple of houses where there's no snow on the roof. <laughs> Uh, from growing oh, in the funny. growing in the attic, man. Oh man! All right, we will be scrolling the Dank Nugs page, but we are not allowed to scroll the Dank Nugs page. We'll do it on the after show. Sure, we hang out on no, after show for me, man. Yeah. I'm not- By the way, I appreciate you uh, being here and stepping in. Yeah. It's too hard to do all the heavy lifting while dude's gone. Yeah, it's not hard, man. It's it's a fun time. It's a fun time, man. It's good to yeah. look at weed and smoke some weed. <laughs> Hang out with some friends. It's no big deal. Yes, we can. We shout out some folks, man. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. How about, what's up with bearded dabbin? Bearded Beard. dabbin yeah. seven ten. All right, I got someone. You saying out bearded? Be a challenge, man. You won't be getting your your uh, beard on fire or anything. It is true, man. Yeah, I can present some challenges depending on how long it is. Have you ever lit your beard on fire? No, I don't no. think so. <laughs> but I remember. Yeah, you would probably remember. You'd probably right. smell it. <laughs> yes. I burn off some of my beard lighting joints. Definitely lit my hair on fire trying to smoke weed before. Back when I had the surfer hair, um, I couldn't find uh, a lighter, so I got a piece of paper and lit it from the uh, stove, and then tried to light the bowl. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. You know the smell. That's dangerous. <laughs> It was college. All I had was the gas stuff. I know that it's dangerous because I've done it. (laughs) Come on. Grow your own medicine and healthy greens. What do you think? You eat greens? Absolutely. You're a greens guy? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I have a salad with my pizza. Favorite green? Bok choy, man. Bok choy? Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) That's awesome, man. Yeah, I like bok choy, too. I didn't know what it was for a while, all right? I never thought it was as good as it is. I ordered it at a restaurant. Like my, I was with my wife, and it was our first date, and uh, they had like something bok choy. It was like you know, tuna bok choy, and I was like, oh, okay. And it was like ridiculously expensive. Like I took it to a nice restaurant. And I was like, well, at least it'll be. It was like the littlest, tiny little baby bok choy fish with a little baby bok choy, and I was like, what the? It was like a soup. Yeah, it was an eighty dollars soup, man. Yeah, things cool. But I like everything's good. <laughs> but I liked it. I was like, damn, this better be the best soup of my life. And it was. Yeah. It was. There's a reason. Paid 80 bucks to know I like bok choy. Mm. Hey, what are you smoking, brother? Uh, what have we got today? We got some triple cherry and we got some dog walker OG. Yeah. Are you so you're growing those actively? You still keep those? Uh, no. Triple cherry is, mm, there's, there's a couple people that have it. We're rank. One on uh, Coffin Nails, I think, has it. Um, I don't have it anymore. And Dog Walker is right there. Oh, nice, man. All right. Dog Walker is killer. It's uh, So if Nice Guy Kenny has it, no, I have it. You see that? It's a, like it's a really, really good cut, um, but um, it's just, I'll enjoy it when someone else grows it. Oh, uh, it's pain has to grow? No, it's not at all. It's a fantastic plant. It's real beastie. It grows quick, but throws out a lot of bud. It's not real pit finicky. Oh, that's super it's easy to trim. <laughs> okay. It's a great plant. Tastes good. Look, looks great. like Jennifer Aniston, but yeah. Uh, everything's it's just cool. not my personal favorite, man. And just buzz wise, flavor wise. Yeah, like I'd rather smoke uh, Sour Dub or Sour Diesel or um, TK or. <laughs> You know, okay. Those are just, just asking just my own personal preferences. Yeah, that's what. If you're gonna grow your fuck. own man, you might as well grow what like your absolute favorite, right? Thank or you. dude, it's the dude calling, man. Oh no way! No way! All right, that was the dude. He called. He told me to stop talking about bok choy and start talking about weed. I got one. Banner, you always smoke your oney, right? Oh, no, I get a bowl. Okay, a bowl, a little oney. Small hammer is the thing, though. But uh, by the way, you, oh, you are not a vapor guy, a vaporizer guy, or uh, not a vape, not a dab pen person, right? The door is open anytime for a uh, dry herb vape. It right. doesn't have that popcorn flavor. Yeah. I can't no, understand no. that flavor. You want me to pack a freshie? You know, no, it's right. excited, man. It's, it's got it. I can think. No, no, it it's, has to do with the temperature. Not as bad. It's not as bad, but man, I can't stand that flavor. I bet if you turn that temperature and down. And the dab opens are great. Um, right, like where you could put concentrate in, but man, there's such a mess. Oh, that I'm talking the carts. Oh, 
Yeah, carts are like a necessary evil <laughs> kind of thing. But you call them a necessary evil. Because they're not, they're, I mean, I don't prefer them for sure. But I, but they're very convenient. I got a joint here that I rolled last night with some extra weed. And then I Colorado crumble. I had it, but I put it in a bag, man. If I would have left this joint out overnight, it would have yeah. sucked, man. But uh, I'm going to save that. I'm going to smoke one joint today. It is a great way to get high as fuck, but for me, it does start uh, it weighing on my mind. I'm 52 years old, Banner, and about just, you know, I should treat my lungs really good, man. If I treat them really good, it'll last me another 30 or 40 years. So what, what happens? I get put, my brain gets put into a computer, Grambo? <laughs> we don't know yet. Isn't it a jar of like barber fluid? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a guy who was like waiting on that, a famous uh, scientist, Ray Kurzweil is his name. Sure. Yeah, he's been uh, banking on that for a while and I've looked into it a little bit and I don't think so. Right. Isn't Walt Disney like cryo frozen? He's ready. Dude, how much would you laugh if like 50 years from now Walt Disney just showed back again, you know? <laughs> Told you. You remember? I told you. Remember that old South Park where Disney comes back because he wants Alien Gonzalez? He's like, Alien, <laughs> stop. <laughs> no. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. They rock, man. They rock. Anyway, there was a lot of uh, discussion in the comments about it over on YouTube about uh, vaping, flower, I'm sorry, smoking versus vaping and flower concentrates and. Can we uh, digress, sir? Can I can I share some with you? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Rico Rodriguez grows. And by the way, before he grew, he was an amazing UFC champion. Okay, shout out to you, Rico. When I was younger, I smoked so much weed that my young brain thought my lungs were coated with resin. So if I smoked cigarettes, it wouldn't be bad for me because my lungs have a protective coating of resin. Uh, it's amazing how you can lie to yourself, right? Especially when you're young, you think gonna live forever. Says my younger self, you can't tell me what to do. I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> my older self looks back at this and says, "What an idiot!" And yeah, it's uh, it's true. I don't like I said. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how I got old. Man, thank God I didn't get any more mature. But uh, yeah, it, after a while, you're pretty glad that you're taking care of your body, no? Yeah, for sure. Um. Okay, and then, yeah, it really did uh, spark a bunch of com uh, conversation. So this is well, ironic. You see the past. That's their name. I stopped smoking and started vaping when my asthma flared up this year. I'm finding the best, smooth smoothest experience with the vape pens. No coughing and asthma. They're really tasty after you've been vaping flour. Every rip is like a fresh flour bowl. But then again, vaping flour is a stronger high. And I do agree with the vaping flour is a stronger high. Um, I uh, I don't love the vape pens for me. It will give me a little <clears throat> in my throat if I hit them all day long. I feel like they're irritating. Yeah, for, for me they are, but like they make, it's itchy. Yeah, I started smoking when my asthma fired up this year. Now, no joke about that, man. Asthma's scary as hell. Uh, so I could see... Not playing. And I can see where Flower would also uh, flare that up. Uh, and here you go. Uh, Andrew Steven says, let me post this since everyone on here seems pretty anti-dab besides Scotty. Oof. I don't take it. <laughs> Smoking, I don't know, anti-dab? I'm you? definitely or, not anti-dab. Yeah, I don't know. So the issue right? for, I just choose not to do it yourself, right? Well, no, honestly, man, I think the issue with dabs is that like, as a if you're going to grow your own weed, right. it's just not necessarily practical to process it into dabbing farm. I got it. And that, to out. me, that's the limitation. No, nah, it is so. I uh, will shout out Rosenbaum, uh, gave me a, a press. And even that little $420 press they had, it was the rocket. Dude, you'd just be like, me and Kenny be hanging out. Dude, you want to do some dabs? Sure. You would grind up a little bit of weed. You would put it in flour. A flour. Okay. You would put it in the, uh, where's my thing? It's right here. You would take this and stuff it in with a bag there, and then you fold the bag up, put it on some parchment paper, and you get maybe a half a gram, three quarters of a gram out, and you'd be like, dude, this is uh, pretty cool. It was fresh rosin right off the press. It was yeah. fucking delicious, man. So uh, I got no problem with a little, you know, making rosin at home, something like that. Yeah. But uh, let's see, we got any. Maybe I just need more skills, man. Oh, uh, you know what? We'll hang out one evening or one maybe after some shows one day and uh, we'll make some dabs. It's fun. 
The other issue is like not having a ton to wash, let's say. Yeah. So yeah. like having one, like if you grow a bunch of different varieties and you have one plant right. of each. Right. It's kind of, I don't know, like who wants to wash one plant? Well, you don't need to wash it. You can literally just take the flower and just squeeze the flower. You can take a bud and just squeeze the bud. You pull the bud off the, it's just what you think, you know, squeeze with heat and pressure. You pull the bud off and what's stuck to the... Where is it? And you just one of these things, man. It will just boom, boom, boom. What's stuck to the uh, parchment paper, it ends up being a big old gob. Mm. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's not for commercial purposes, but you and your buddies can get a nice, nice round of dabs going. And it's fun and it's fresh, too. It tastes good. Yeah, I imagine if it's it's good quality, if it's your weed and you just, and I mean, to me, the only issue would be yield. I wouldn't be worried that it's not bright white or something. Yeah, no, it's not. But I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, it's pleasurable. The only thing I care about what is about the yield. How it tastes, man. How it tastes. Sure, you're not wasting weed like that, man. It's not so bad. It's really not what do you so do with bad. The puck? With this? Yeah, oh, the, the puck, puck you throw that's out. Left over. You throw it's out. Funny. I feel like you don't make I edibles or anything out I of it. I sell it to my mother in law. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's kind of stoned all the time, so it must be working. Dude, she is. Uh, I told her she got to she got to come to the DGC Cup. I told her. Wait, hold on. But can you I like extract the cups, like uh, you know, alcohol or something? Yeah, the or the, make butter, the pucks? like edibles or absolutely. something. Absolutely, absolutely. Just so that they're not wasted. Yeah, I guess that would make me feel better. You're growing your own. It's a plant, you know. Yeah, but it's it's not twenty dollars a gram anymore, bro. Don't you remember the days of smoking the aluminum or excuse yes, me, the aluminum that's bowls, my point, the man. black tar, just so you could get high? You tell me to check my weed privilege. It's okay. Check your weed privilege. <laughs> yeah, Mister Freeze Dryer and uh, Rosin Press. Uh, Camille Turcote says, hundred uh, percent. I've been almost dabs and pens only for years. I feel like it's way more clean experience. I don't stink. My girlfriend doesn't like the smell when I smoke joints. Uh, uh, yeah, I get that, man. I do get that comment. Yeah. yeah I can you stink. I can dab in. <laughs> Everything's cool, though. Uh, I can dab inside, and it doesn't stink up the place. Uh, it's a better bake, better on my heart and lungs. It's a bummer there's so many anti-dabbers out there. So I am giving y'all, I am representing y'all's okay. platform. Do you, do you ever generate concern in the other people in your party when you go to, like, a restaurant and you just smoke and you just stink like weed? And you're all going into like the restaurant. Anybody ever be like, like, Are you whoa, kidding me? Yeah, I went to Thanksgiving at my mom's house, and the guy goes, "I smell smoke." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got this. <laughs> I got all See, my. See if you were hitting the dab rig, it's probably not that. Bad. I got all of my friends right? kicked out of a bar one time because they weren't smoking, and I reeked so bad. The bartender's like, "Yeah, it seems like you guys had had enough. They hadn't smoked, <laughs> no. so they got kicked out because I and I, and I don't drink." You're like, but it's good. What do you mean to do? Yeah, they were furious. Dude, you said I was telling Banner, man. I, you know, it's like karma. Uh, a buddy of ours uh, uh, that Banner introduced me to, really nice guy, called me up and said, hey, if you're out tonight, uh, this band is playing at uh, this one bar. And we're like, oh, it's a cool bar. It's a little bit. Would you call Laporte? Is that a redneck bar up there? It's a no. whatever they are up here, man. Cowboy bar a little bit. It's it's got a little bit of a cowboy yeah. kind of feel to it. So a anyway, cowboy rancher for sure. I walk in and it's full on Grateful Dead music. <coughs> it's full just, on, not full, not like no. just like a couple songs. Like, like the girls on, spinning guys. and stuff like that. So you the know, twirlers were out. I'm all about hanging out. I was hanging out with my buddy, just having a good time. I thought I fit in pretty good. I did order a Corona. I don't think many people in the dead, you know, in the dead scene drink Coronas, but uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd say that. Dude, I went, <laughs> I went to order the Coronas, and I go three, three Coronas, please. Uh, no, I go three Coronas, and the guy just looks at me and he goes, walks up, makes eye contact, and goes, "Is that how you're gonna ask me?" <laughs> I was floored. I was like, uh, "You guys know how aggressive Scotty can be." Yeah, I go, "Please." I <laughs> said, "You seem like you're busy." I apologize. The dude was out to get me for the rest of the night, man. <laughs> it was insane. It was insane, man. And then at the end of the night, though, it all made sense because it was kind of like a roughneck bar, I think, during the week, the swing station. And he looks at me. I go, hey, man, I'm not trying to bust your balls. And he looks at me. He goes, dude, I'm just, gonna <laughs> I'm just trying to get through the night. 
And then I realized like he wasn't a deadhead at all. <laughs> and he was just trying to get through. He didn't know what was going on. Oh, it made me laugh so hard, bro. They found me out. He was man. having a rough night, man. Yeah, yeah. I was accepted by nobody there. Okay. Huh, interesting. <laughs> No, Did I the music a, stop when you walked in? Pretty much. <laughs> I had a good time. I had a great time, actually. I can always hang. I've been to dead shows and had a great time. Ready? Veggie pasta. I've never I've never known that crowd of, crowd of people to go see those shows to be like like not welcoming. Super cool people. Whether you're into it or not. Like the bartender. No one cares, man. I've never had a bartender like it like well, he was, beef with Yeah, me. he he was just having a rough day. Yeah. It was an interesting scene, man. Come on, man. Can I shout some folks out? Would you like to shout some folks out with me, man? Sure. All right. I'll start with Fudge Little. You know, remember little fudgy little? But <laughs> oh fudge little. Shucks, man. No, man. I got uh I'm gonna see if I can do this correctly. The Nugginator. 87. No, it, no, I did it wrong. It's the nug, Nugginator. N- nugginator? No, it's the yeah. Nugginator. Are you sure? I it's think you have like a 0% success rate 87. here. Man. I'm not good at it. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 hold on. I could do You got this one. one. I got this one. Frosty the Grow Man. Ah, I love it. Frosty Nailed it. the Grow Man. Nailed it. Love it. Good deal. Hey, can That's I shout out to Integra? Where's my stuff? I've been able to keep my weed uh, looking good for months and uh, nice and moist because of uh, Integra, man. These are those boost packs, 62% moisture. Uh, dude, you got it uh, from one. I'm not a connoisseur. From one grower to another, you got to keep that in this uh, dry environment. You got to keep your weed moist, man. Oh, hold up. So what's the, isn't there one that's like a little bit drier than that it's one? It's like a 58. I like the 62. You like the 62? Yep. Yep. Mm. Especially for here. Yeah, that's kind of like Oregon style. I feel. No, it's not. Like a little, on, a little on the you yeah, know, like like, side than most. Like rolls good joints, burns yeah. nice and slow. I got nothing but positive. I put it this way: I'm not even trying the. I think they're 58s. I have no interest in trying them. The 62s are perfect. That is that good. 55. Yeah, 55. Okay. Yeah, because I'm constantly opening and closing those things, man. Is there like a reason? It's just personal preference. It's personal right? preference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Pretty cool, man. Hey, shout out to the DGC producers, dudegrows.com slash support. Do I got that right, Banner? Absolutely. Go over. It's 10 bucks a month. You're a DGC pro. Uh, you get additional content. You get, uh, first off, we are doing the after show, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Soup's there doing the 420 happy hour. Uh, 30% off recharge. There's a 30% off recharge deal over there. Actually, anything over at Real Growers, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, no, not anything. Not anything. Recharge grow dots, right? Everything. <laughs> anything. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> For example, not on the small, the smallest size. Okay. Deal. But 30% off, man, going over there. And uh, yeah, it's just a way to show our appreciation. We appreciate uh, all the support. I guess I say this before, but it sticks in my mind. Sticks in my craw is YouTube just disappeared us. So if they disappear us, we have dudegrows.com and uh, we have that because of the patrons. So I appreciate it. If I may, I do want to thank everybody that participates uh, yes. on Patreon because that's the part that makes it fun. It is cool. So what we've been the trying community, to do. community, yeah. Well, yeah, but the thing that's really fun, I think, is like when you post something and then people respond but it's not a response to me or to you it's a response like that's of interest to everybody so one of the best things to do is just to read through those comment Ooh. threads man yeah. you will learn something there's a lot of really cool people but uh that's the part that i enjoy about the patron uh yeah patron and it, it, setup and it is it's, it's a community everybody gives you shit there nobody's just you know casual i shouldn't say nobody but it's not like somebody's just casually scrolling some comments and it's on, on youtube and it's like oh yeah here it's all really uh vested dgc man it's good stuff yeah and there's a lot of smart intelligent funny witty cool. yeah everything like right. the, the comments are just worth your time to read i love it <laughs> I dig it Hey, man, first off, thank you so much for hanging out and sitting in. My pleasure. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Um, this is one. It's it's uh, 
this is a complex issue right here. Grandpa, will you uh, show this? Uh, we'll get into the news, man. Oh, I've been waiting for this. A massive seaweed bloom. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't help it. Banner makes fun of me. This is from the New York Post. And I used to subscribe to the New York Times and I had no interest in it. And I love the New York Post. And uh, it just, I go, now I have to admit, yeah, I'm more New York Post than New York Times, Banner, okay? As long as you re recognize that it's just sensationalized. Right. It's all good, man. But there you go. That's what it is. That's uh, sar sargassum, I believe. And uh, back in the day, young Scotty, when he lit his hair on fire, used to surf. And we would find that with just little, little hunks of it. We'd throw it on each other's surfboards. There was little crabs that lived in there. Uh, unfortunately, there was these things called sea lice too, which were kind of like they sounded. And uh, yeah, so that was kind of, you didn't want to see a lot of that. So have, <laughs> What happened there, man? What, what was that? Video, the Serial video, killer, uh, Russian spy dad or something, I mean, something, if that man? doesn't encapsulate the American news cycle, like like it auto plays from seaweed to just murder. <laughs> Can you replay that, though? Because uh, that amount of seaweed there was freaking crazy. And it's uh, it stinks. It starts rotting and it stinks. Hold on. That picture can't possibly explain how long this is. Yeah, it's thousands of miles. Five thousand miles and of seafood of seaweed. Yo, and this is why I know all about those programmed release fertilizers is because it's been a problem for decades that people the cheapest fertilizer you can buy is you should get it whatever ammonium nitrate whatever the hell you need that is just raw chemicals and you go and you just flood the fields with them. Literally, that's what big sugar does. Uh, which is who's like the closest neighbor to the Everglades. And then they just dumped it's the Everglades. The Everglades is a, a river. It ends up making contact with the ocean just real quick. And it ends up the ocean is loaded with all this fertilizer, all this. So we're nutrients. feeding the seafood or seaweed. Yes, we're feeding it, man. Absolutely. And it's growing like crazy. And guess what else? Seaweed. Why do you think? I put it in, these are all shameless plugs. The seaweed I put in recharge is cold water Norwegian kelp. The reason you go to cold water and you go all the way to Norway is because it's not polluted. And it is so sad, but we polluted the ocean bad so enough. That is loaded with heavy, heavy metals, metals, man. Yes. You can, so what you, eats that? Uh, what is those, Well, what eats all that kelp? I was going to ask, I don't think there's anything that eats that much of it. And what the problem is, is now you have heavy metals in the food chain. So, no, you know me, I'd be like, dude, just take that and put it on your crops. But now you're taking heavy metals and putting them in your crops so you can't do food crops. And then you're taking those heavy metals and con contaminating the soils with it for future generations, which is fucked up. So it's like, what do you do with it? So I have a dumb question. Where Please. do those heavy metals come from in the first place? Just because it's cheaper to produce that fertilizer without making it cleaner? I don't think that's the fertilizer. I think that's all the other pollution in the ocean. I don't know that the fertilizers are the culprit for that. The heavy metals? There is just a ton of garbage that is, uh, in a, you know, whatever, just pollutants in the ocean. And why is it that there's no heavy metals in Norway, but there's heavy metals in, uh, uh, off, you know, in the seaweed off the coast of Florida? I can tell you every time you look off the coast of Florida, there's freighters lined up. You go across, uh, uh, outside the port of Houston. I've never seen so many giant oil ships lined up. Right. And they're just waiting for the price of oil to go up or down. It's insane. <laughs> anyway, man, but it freaked me out. I saw these people that were doing. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen with this? Cup? I don't know. I really, it's a problem right now. Will it die? Uh, yes, it will die and it will rot and it will smell terrible, but it's going to leave those heavy metals with it. And then like, will it wash up on shore? Oh, it is. So, it, yeah, it absolutely so is. So people are like cleaning it up? Yeah. And think about it. Emma, you want to go to the beach? You know, we used to go surfing. We'd go a couple hours, drive up to Sebastian yes. Inlet and go surfing, man. And then that stuff is just, I mean, it wasn't that bad in the 80s and 90s, but... Dude, could you imagine just a huge chain of that that you got to walk through with the sea lights? Will it make you fall stuff? while you're surfing? I mean, I wouldn't. Or are you going over it? Yeah, it's just it was little globs when we were doing it. No, but that looks like. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, that's an, and the stink of that rotting. 
So just I thought I'd bring it up. There was a couple of interesting ideas of what to do with it. But for me, the heavy metals was the deal breaker because it's just contaminated stuff. What do you do with it? Uh, anyway, I thought it was an interesting conversation to start. Uh, a lot of times I just bring this up to uh, get the conversation started. So please comment if anybody has any interesting ideas. Uh, yeah. Tell us your seaweed stories. I uh, just be... <laughs> I'm interested, man. Do you have a seaweed story, Scott? (laughs) It's crazy. Um, Not on just the surfing. Other than sea lice, no. Sea lice? Yeah, the sea lice live in the uh, in the seaweed. Oh, so So, you stay away from the seaweed for that? Yeah, but I mean, if you get tangled up in the seaweed, then all of a sudden you're itching like crazy. And are those the ones that have the little floaty balls on them, or is that West Coast stuff? Uh, Those are the floaty balls. Yeah, sargasm. Yeah, yeah. brown. Yeah. Yep. Slimy. Hey, I got one just really quick, man. Just remember we were talking about say uh talking to your kids about drugs. This is why, man. This is uh just shit shows up. Cheyenne, uh, Wyoming is only about 45 minutes from us. And it's a different breed up there, man. There's different this is a different news cycle. Woman streaks through downtown Cheyenne because voices in her head told her to Air it out. To quote, air it out. <laughs> can already tell that this has nothing to do with weed. No, it's crystal meth, man. She's obviously she was methed out and she just ran around naked, airing it out. But I just, at negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Did you see that? Oh, but it's just so hot. <laughs> It just, uh, man, seriously, I was talking as a callback to talking to your kids about drugs. I mean, it really is. I showed my kid this, you know, she's hopefully walking away thinking, God, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to play the fool. That doesn't look cool at all. So how how annoyed do you think the people in Cheyenne are, are that weed is illegal in Wyoming? I don't. You know what? I saw something about it being decriminalized. Really? They think I live in oh, Cheyenne yeah. in, now. The, in the city, right? Yeah, in the city of Cheyenne. And then once, I mean, come on, Cheyenne, Wyoming. What is that, like cattle country? I don't really go to Wyoming. Refinery. I don't go past that border. It's oil refinery? There's a refinery over there somewhere, yeah. Gotcha. Got you. Yeah, okay. So I can see. Do you want your oil refinery workers smoking? Is that better? After work? Yeah, oh, after shit. work. Is that better than drinking? Absolutely. It is. It is. All right, man. All right, that's my news. <laughs> Come on, you shout out. You can get this one, man. All right. Where are we here? I got uh, Grow Mom? Grow Mom. Oh, yeah. I can do that. Man. Yeah. There you go. Oh, this one's classic. Dude, where's my bong? <laughs> Captain Chronic. Have you seen Dude, Where's My Car? No. No. Ashton no. Kutcher? Yeah, I haven't no. seen it either, man. Grambo? It's yeah. Old, it's too that's not back in the day. It's as terrible as you would think it is. <laughs> okay. For sure. No, no, so much. Okay, man. All right, one more shout out to our friend Tanazi over at Sacred Three Mushrooms. I haven't hung out with Tanazi for a little while, man. And by the way, so I was, you know, we're always worried about getting in trouble on YouTube. So I'm like, God, Grambo, we can, you know, just don't show anything. You don't show, well, yeah, it turns out that uh, mushrooms are at least, I don't, I don't understand the rules. Grumble, do me a favor. Will you just click uh, the first link is under, under my social media, if you would? I, I still think that so much of this is driven by that news story back in like the 60s about the person that like. Jumped out the window. On LSD. Yeah, it's and probably fake. I think that it, this is all like from that, I swear. I've lived long enough. We've lived long enough to see mushroom gummies advertised on Facebook. I know, but there's still a lot of like hate out there for it and like fear. Well, I mean, dude, your parents ever catch you tripping your face off? I always love the Bill Hicks joke about it's like if he thought he could fly, why did he start from the ground? <laughs> so he jumped out of a, a window. It's, it's like why did you start from the ground? <laughs> That's a good point, man. See, Bill Hicks is one of those intellectuals, man. It takes me a while. You know? <laughs> I have to have Bill Hicks Joe's explained to me. No, but anyway, I just thought that Tanazi's doing his thing. Uh, I guess mushrooms are really being decriminalized because this is Facebook is much more liberal. I see a lot more weed and uh uh you know stuff on Facebook. You don't want to know why. <laughs> why I need the money. Yeah, you're right. That whole metaverse was just a big flop and they're laying off like 10,000 people, you know. Facebook is? Yeah. 
Well, I click, click this. <laughs> I love that we're watching a TikTok video on Facebook and you guys are watching it on YouTube. <laughs> so who's making the money there? Dude, do me so a favor. Look, just, dude, I, can, I didn't uh, take too much I of know, it. I, I, can, like, I, I like this video, okay? Mm-hmm. He just starts tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what mushrooms are to you, um, man? Yeah, I guess at night it could be, right? Took- can so be. look, dude, yeah. like, I didn't take too much of anyway, it. Anyway, I like that commercial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. like that I've lived long enough, whole- man, that they're advertising mushrooms. Oh, yeah, I feel that. That yeah. there's a, the, any advertisement for something like that is pretty crazy. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. At this point. <laughs> oh, shit. Come on, man. Got a couple of memes. You're laughing some memes with me. Are these safe for YouTube? Oh, shit. No, it's not. God damn it. No, it's not safe for you. All right. We just got edited, man. Sorry, <laughs> pal. Uh, Pat Caso, aka Patio Toker. It's a way of life. It's not a hobby. Uh, thank you so much, man. Just my best Jeff Spicoli imitation there. I'm sorry we can't show weed. <laughs> JR did this one, man. And it's weed. It says, for all you cookie lovers. And we did have a lot of cookie lovers. It was kind of poking fun. You see, what do you get to poke fun when somebody has so much success? There's nothing to do but poke fun. So, oh, done out of love. Uh, cookie. It's the highest form of flattery. Yes. Uh, it's just the cookie monster. <laughs> what? Is this real? Mm-hmm. I hope this really happened. It's the cookie monster. It seems depressed, staring out at the ocean. <laughs> but when people ask me why I always smoke weed, and he's looking, he goes, without my cookies, I'm just a monster. Hmm. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> all right. It's brilliant. <laughs> And then Grambo, man, I'm on an ASMR kick. So I remember we were talking about it. Mm-hmm. You want? All right. So I found the anti ASMR now. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Do you like? Have you seen this one? I have seen this. Yeah. What is like it like? This. The most grating noises. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. we'll you're gonna do the noise too. Run, but not gonna let that spoil. What's he do? Uh, throws a. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can already tell this is gonna be bad. Throws a. Uh, what is it? Oh, it's a metal piece. It's oh, just something. Yeah. Something to knock it off balance. Clunk. <laughs> and then here we go. It's a dryer. Sorry. It's uh this is bad podcasting. I thought this was a YouTube show. I, I thought this was a video of one eyed cats grow. Yeah, one eyed cat did uh it's a washer he grew it. No, it's a dryer he grew it, right? Oh wow. Look at this though, man. They just put a they messed up the, the balance of the dryer. And uh yeah. Life moves from order to disorder, Grambo. It's all entropy, bro. Second law of thermodynamics. I mean, seriously, I was watch. I watched this whole thing, and then I watched it again. <laughs> it goes for four minutes, dear God. Dude, it gets bad at the end, man. Okay, <laughs> let's skip ahead. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it shakes itself apart. Yeah. We'll, oh yeah. We'll skip to the end. Oh no, it's going. It's going. Just leave it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Why am I entertained by this shit, man? <laughs> Passive hydroponics. Chaotic destruction. Yeah. Wow. And washing machines. So this is what they do in Australia. <laughs> is this Australia? Yeah, Aussie. Wow, 50. they get better machines than we do here, that's for sure. Wow, I wonder what they call a washing machine in Australia. <laughs> they call it a jimbery. A washi. <laughs> Huh. It's a rim tim tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, Grambo, I don't know why this last one reminded me of you. Oh, boy. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> yes, this one's old famous. Yeah, I oh, love this classic. shit. When you're overqualified for the job, mm. man. <laughs> There's a bunch of these. What fun. is happening there, man? He's got to be just just really depressed inside no <laughs> i mean you know no, it's probably pretty fun <laughs> it's all marketing baby unless you're like missing school for this that's the only way you're happy to be in that thing <laughs> <laughs> but then doesn't he like lose his shit and like start like going metal or something? he starts going off man yeah. i don't know what it is but he starts completely <sighs> he's gonna be, yeah go all the way to the end i think yeah <laughs> she <laughs> is bored <laughs> This is bizarre. It is bizarre. She's just trying to suffer through it. Anyway, man. Yep. That's Scotty's evening on YouTube. 
<laughs> Let me check out your YouTube algorithm. Very, very uh, personal, man. When you can see what everybody searches on YouTube. I was going to yeah. do a bit on that. Um, my buddy is a comedian as a podcast. I was telling him, he's like, we should do a bit because like TikTok's such a sophisticated algorithm. I was like, we're just like, open your phone and show me your TikTok. Like your real soul comes out when that happens. Ah, mm, your um, TikTok. Yeah. yeah. YouTube, the YouTube uh, history is. YouTube will reveal to you. Yeah. Right. My guilty pleasure right now is the uh, Steven Seagal movie reviews. You got a bunch of weird guilty but Steven Seagal. Yeah, yeah, check out Space Ice. Okay, and, so you uh, do it, man. Do it. Yeah, Space Ice. It's uh, it's just funny. Does there? Well, so he's got some reviews of some movies, and then then the Steven like action movies. Mm. Oh, and yeah. This the is Steven the- Seagal <laughs> ones in particular. He just. Oh man, Neil Breen. If you guys don't know who Neil Breen is, he's the crazy. Everyone says that The Room is the worst movie in history, but every Neil Breen movie is the it's worst. The- <laughs> uh, Seagal has just these crazy. The, the movies are just crazy. Like the writing is really bad, and like the stunts are really bad. There's one where he beats somebody up while sitting in a chair, <laughs> and like he's like as the years go by, he's increasingly uh, lazy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That was good. Ah, that is so funny. Uh, And then the weird thing is that when you're not from America, people not from America, they love Steven Seagal movies, man. Yeah. Yeah, totally. (laughs) If you're just looking for an act, like a mindless action film, I guess, where you don't really need to know the plot or any of the words that are being spoken. Right. See that. The favorite thing you showed me is the people at Guitar Center. Oh, that's the other one. Oh, yeah. The the, people being at Guitar Center. The Forbidden Riff. Being stopped playing uh, Stairway to Heaven. (laughs) The old Wayne's World. No Stairway. So good. All right, man. I can continue this forever. Yeah, I want to go watch YouTube now. Uh, Batters, good hanging. Thank you for hanging with me, man. Yeah, man. We got an after show, no? Yeah, I'm totally down. Do or watch it. Or is this the after show? <laughs> no, we're doing the after show. Stay tuned. After shows where you can see like real buds and stuff, right? You're right. Oh, actually, you know what? I want to tell you Cortez the Conqueror's uh, a grow on there, man. Or at least what he's doing to real buckets. Oh, cool. Like, beautiful. Right. All right, y'all. Uh, take it easy. I had a great time hanging out. Uh, we'll see you doing another show on Thursday. We're doing our best to get content out with the dude being gone. Uh, but Grambo, I like yeah. this, man. And so uh, new stuff coming down the pipe, DGC. So we're going to be changing up the dates again. Like YouTube's messing with us. So uh, we're changing up. So I think it's going to be uh, Tuesday will be the uh, the main release day for the beginning of the week. But there's going to be some other new stuff coming, too. So keep your eye open. Whoa. Still going to do that Saturday show, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It's a staple. Plenty, plenty of shows. Man. Saturday yeah. show is fun. All right, y'all. We'll take her easy and uh, stay tuned for the after show. So it's called the after show? Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep that rolling, Grambo. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, it's, uh, suddenly we're the after show and everything's legal. <laughs> ah, That's true. Hey, Banner, <laughs> grab them plants, will you? What did you bring us? <laughs>